Transportation is a traditional activity. Since time immemorial, humans have had to transport goods and services, structures, and even themselves from one place to the other. Transportation has been in existence since the earliest times, when wooden carts and animals like horses, donkeys, and bulls were used exclusively. As times changed, we saw numerous inventions taking place, and the changes resulted in the invention of cars, buses, trucks, spacecraft, helicopters, ships, aeroplanes, etc., taking the place of earlier transportation. The importance of transportation is that it enables trade, commerce, and communication that establish civilization. It is good planning that manages traffic flows and enables undisturbed and steady movement from one place to the other. It is transportation that acts as a link between manufacturing facilities and consumer markets. Transportation is a reality of our life, and without effective and affordable transportation, it becomes impossible for any kind of movement from one place to another. Transportation has been an all-important contributing factor in the development of all nations, and that too at every stage of civilization in this world. Remember, if the current transport means were not in existence, the situation in this modern world would have been very different. It is impossible to think of speedy industrialization, mass production, as well as distribution in place without a fully developed infrastructure and transportation. The transportation facilities have also been a prominent factor in the development of the political, social, economic, and cultural fields of a country. In the reed sector, the company with the ability to transport freight in the most cost and time efficient manner reigns supreme in their industry. Therefore, an essential part of transportation management lies in building an efficient supply chain from the six main modes of transportation road, maritime, air, rail, intermodal, and pipeline. Understanding the strengths and weaknesses of each mode is paramount to building an effective supply chain. Logistics managers hire the character who fits four traits. Whoever can move the greatest volume of products with the greatest speed over the greatest distance at the lowest cost. All companies hold these four traits to different levels of importance, but overall, this principle remains true across the board. The mode by which companies approach these four aspects of shipping has changed over time and is still changing to this day. Each of the main modes of transportation has its advantages and disadvantages for shippers to take into consideration. The first step toward choosing the right mode is understanding the aspects that make each mode unique from the others. Though road transport is more notable for the movement of lesser pounds of load, it is noteworthy that some extraordinary weight of loads has been transported through the road in some extraordinary road transportation processes. Today, we are going to be considering the 15 most extraordinary transportation processes of all time. Let's begin. Number 15. Shuttle Fuel Tank ET-94 A 65,000-pound space shuttle fuel tank was transported by road through the city of Los Angeles in around 19 hours. Wow! The mission was to move the ET-94 shuttle fuel tank which was the last flight-qualified external tank in existence, to the California Science Center from Marina del Rey, where it had arrived by barge from the NASA Center in New Orleans. The tank traveled 4,400 miles and passed through the Panama Canal on its one-month journey. The total trek through the city was only 16 and a half miles long, but the streets of LA are not known for being friendly to small cars, let alone a 65,000-pound fuel tank. According to reliable reports, the tank traveled by truck starting at around midnight, and it moved through the city at a blistering clip of 5 miles per hour. This tank was escorted by police, city officials, and astronauts. Along the way, utility crews removed obstacles like telephone lines so that the tank could squeeze through narrow city streets and would reinstall them afterwards. ET-94 was originally designed to hold fuel for the Space Shuttle Columbia's launch, but it was never put into use, although it was used to study what could have caused the shuttle to be destroyed upon re-entry in 2003. Fuel tanks, which carry propellants, detach about 70 miles above the Earth's surface after liftoff and often burn up in the atmosphere on their way down. 
so it's no surprise that this ET-94 is the last in existence. Number 14. Shuttle Endeavour Cordoba Corporation was an integral part of a team of consultants selected by officials of the California Science Center to contribute expertise and resources to assist the center in the planning, engineering, and execution of the historic transport of the shuttle. Multiple organizations and government agencies were involved in this major logistical undertaking. Approximately 122 feet long, with a wingspan of 78 feet and a height of 58 feet to the top of its tail on self-propelled mobile transporters, the Space Shuttle Endeavour arrived at LAX on top of the NASA 747 Shuttle aircraft carrier and had to be moved to the California Science Center along 12 miles of urban streets. Cordoba Corps drew on its transportation planning expertise to thoroughly analyze and document all of the temporary clearance work needed along the 12-mile route from LAX through the cities of Inglewood and Los Angeles and performed field verification of all obstructions to determine a route that minimized the impact on the surrounding communities. As a result of Cordoba Corporation's extensive field review and analysis, a path was developed that decreased the number of items that needed to be cleared by 50%. Cordoba Corporation was responsible for the design, construction oversight, and coordination of the temporary removal of street services along the route, which included signal poles, light poles, street signs, parking meters, etc. Cordoba Corporation professionals were recognized by the California Science Center, mayors of the City of Los Angeles and Inglewood, the California Legislature, and engineering news record magazine for the planning and execution of this historic move. The collaboration included coordination with the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, Los Angeles World Airports, Los Angeles and Inglewood City Authorities, NASA, Caltrans, LA Metro, AT&T, Time Warner, other telecom companies, area residents, and many other affected parties. Number 13. Telescope Mirror 216 Ton The first phase began on October the 23rd, when the 16 metric ton mirror and its 33.5 metric ton steel transport were loaded onto a truck at the Mirror Lab. Early in the morning, the truck hauled the assembly to the Mount Graham International Observatory Base Camp near the Pinalino Mountains. The Mirror and its 25-vehicle police escort averaged 72 kilometers per hour as the convoy traversed 196 kilometers. The second and more arduous phase took place from October the 27th to 30th. On the 27th, the mirror was placed on a massive trailer, and for the next three days, the trailer climbed 2,400 meters on a gravel road called Swift Trail at the snake-like pace of 1.6 kilometers per hour. The trailer rode on 48 wheels, each with its independent hydraulic system to maintain the mirror's upright posture as the trailer negotiated 47 kilometers of winding road and narrow hairpin turns. Telescope Assembly Supervisor J.T. Williams inspected every foot of Swift Tail beforehand and Observatory and Arizona Department of Transport staffers smoothed over bumps and ruts in the gravel. With the transport completed, the mirror was scheduled to see first light in the summer of 2004. Number 12. Muon G2 Magnet 17 Tons The mighty Muon G2 ring has finally completed its month-long 3,200-mile odyssey by barge and truck from Brookhaven National Laboratory to its new home in Fermilab in Batavia, Illinois. But before the $25 million electromagnets could trek along the eastern coastline, round the tip of Florida and navigate the twists and turns of the Mississippi River, it had to first leave Brookhaven's Building 919 and move to the Smith Point Marina. A large team of Brookhaven Lab employees, including engineers from the Collider Accelerator Department and experts from the Safety and Health Services Division SHSD, coordinated the journey's crucial first steps alongside researchers and project managers from Fermilab professional moving contractors, and tradesmen. Lab employees worked for months with representatives from the heavy transportation company Emmert International and the New York State and Suffolk County police officers to map out the magnet's departure. 
from its parade across campus and exit through the main gate to its midnight cruise down the William Floyd Parkway and South Shore Farewell. Number 11. SpaceX Falcon 9 Rocket Rocket launches are a common sight these days, especially given how commercial space companies like SpaceX are pioneering some of the most advanced reusable rocket technologies in the industry to lower the cost of launches for paving customers, including NASA and the private sector. The components that comprise the Falcon 9 rocket travel to Florida on the back of large semi-tractor trailer trucks. The Merlin engines are individually sent to Texas, where they're subjected to inspection and test firing before returning to Hawthorne. After everything is deemed working, the engines are attached to the first stage, and the fully assembled first stage goes for a ride to Florida atop a 44-wheel trailer. The Falcon 9's second stage and all of its landing gear are transported separately via different trucks, and the logistics are carefully timed to ensure that everything gets to the destination promptly. Once arriving at Florida, the second stage and landing gear are attached to the first stage, after which it's hauled over to the launch pad and hoisted horizontally, where it can be prepared for launch. Number 10. Bullwinkle Jacket The Bullwinkle platform is a self-contained drilling and production platform recently installed in the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 160 miles south-southwest of New Orleans. The water depth at the Green Canyon Block 65 site is 1,353 feet. The platform is a conventional template type structure with horizontal jacket dimensions of 135 by 158 feet at the top, plus 15 foot elevation, and 400 by 480 feet at the midline. The platform is supported by 28 84 inch diameter skirt piles. The Bullwinkle jacket was transported to the installation site on Hirima's launch barge, H851. Positioning lines from four tugs and two anchor lines from the crane vessel Odin were connected to the jacket before launch. Some free flooding of the lower end of the jacket was permitted after launch, but it was not sufficient for the jacket to completely self-upend. Personnel boarded the top of the jacket to complete the ballasting operations using pre-installed control panel. The jacket was positioned on the bottom by additional flooding without crane assistance. The piles were all fabricated to full length and transported to the field on a single cargo barge. Number 9. Offshore Wind Farm Offshore wind energy is the clean and renewable energy obtained by taking advantage of the force of the wind that is produced on the high seas, where it reaches a higher and more constant speed than on land due to the absence of barriers. To make the most of this resource, megastructures are installed that are seated on the seabed and equipped with the latest technical innovations. The ease of maritime transport, which has few limitations about cargo and dimensions in comparison with land transportation, has made it possible for offshore wind turbines to reach much larger unit capacities and sizes than onshore wind turbines. Offshore wind farms work by the force of the wind turning the blades. The blades are attached to the nacelle through the hub, while the low speed spins at the same speed as the blades, that is 7 to 12 turns per minute. The gearbox increases this speed more than 100 times and transfers it to the high speed shaft. The high speed shaft, at more than 1500 revolutions per minute, transmits this speed to the generator. The generator transforms the kinetic energy it receives into electricity. The electricity produced by the generator is fed down through the inside of the tower. The converter converts the direct current into an alternating current. The transformer raises the voltage, 33 kV to 66 kV, to transport it across the wind farm. The electricity is transported through the distribution network to homes. At the substation, the electricity is converted to a high voltage current, plus 150,000 volts. The electricity is transmitted via underwater cables to the substation. Number 8. Asta Hanstein Offshore Platform On the 26th of April 2017, Statoil's huge Asta Hanstein Spa, the world's largest and Norway's first, set sail from Hyundai Heavy Industries shipyard bound for Norway. The journey above Boscalis's dockyard vineyard heavy transport vessel 
is about 14,500 nautical miles long and will take about two months. Once in Norway, the spar hull will be floated off and later this year the 25,000 ton topsides will be mated using a catamaran floatover. Following commissioning work, the spar will then be towed into the Norwegian Sea to be moored at the Arstar Hansteen field and is due on stream in 2018. Statoil's Arstar Hansteen spar development will move Norwegian operations into a new deep water environment. The spar will be moored in 1300 meter water depth in the Norwegian Sea. The deepest previous project is Shell's Ormen Lange at 900 meters. The Arstar Hansteen facility will be Norway's first spa project, as well as being the world's largest spa. The country's first use of steel catenary visors, SCRs, the first synthetic rope mooring spread offshore Norway, and the first use of mechanically lined pipe installed using real lay in the country. Number 7. Ammonia Converter the transportation of the immense ammonia converter was carried out by Total Movements PVT Limited. A member of the Worldwide Project Consortium in India managed the delivery from Xworks India of a massive 405 ton ammonia converter pressure shell from the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company at Mina Zayed Abu Dhabi. Based on intense 24 7 cooperation and innumerable calculations, Deployment of suitable axle configuration, movement of the cargo under special escort, arranging suitable vessels for safe loading amidst considerable swell due to the onset of monsoon, and unloading the cargo safely onto the barge at discharge port. What made this transportation process all the more remarkable is the fact that all the transport logistics and activities were accompanied seamlessly despite lockdown-like conditions due to COVID-19. Number 6. Borealis Subsea Pipe Player The vessel was first ordered by Nordic Heavy Lift and launched from Nantong Yahua Shipyard in China on October 19, 2009. The hull was towed to Singapore for final outfitting at Sembawang. Later, the hull was acquired by Asoji, now merged with Subsea 7. Originally ordered as a classical heavy lift vessel, Subsea 7 decided to convert the 7 Borealis to a pipe play and heavy lift vessel with Ulstein's assistance. The mast crane was complemented by an existing J lay system transferred from a Subsea 7 vessel, a new S lay system, and at a future point, a 500 ton flex lay tower for vertical laying. The new vessel would also feature a range of support and construction equipment configured for global deep water and harsh environment operations. The conversion involved added 1,000 kilometers of cable to the vessel. In April 2012, the vessel arrived in the Netherlands for the final outfitting of the pipe play system. In the end of September 2012, the vessel left for her first job, Total's Clove project in Angola Block 17. The program included a J-lay of 40 km of pipe-in-pipe -pipe production flow lines, an S-lay and J-lay of 32 km of gas export lines, and 60 km of water injection lines, and the installation of a gas export single hybrid riser and associated manifold. Number 5. Gas Turbine Moving the largest and most powerful gas turbine from Berlin to Ersching in Bavaria was a real transportation masterstroke. The transport group Multilift was entrusted to transport all parts designed for the power plant in Itching. However, the precondition for this was that the heaviest part, a gas turbine measuring nearly 6 meters in width, would have sufficient supporting surface and a certain axle load would not be exceeded. The permitted route, however, was too narrow to combine two heavy-duty modules side by side. Fortunately, P. Adams, a member of the Multilift Group, disposes of so-called split modules. The advantage of these split modules is that they can be split in the longitudinal direction, resulting in a platform with three pendular axles side by side and a vehicle width of 4,900 mm. This allowed all requirements of the permit to be met without any problems. To cover the first section of the transport route, 
The gas turbine was carried by a push barge train up to the goods hub of Kelheim and Saal. Here, the turbine of approximately 500 tons was reloaded onto the 30-axle heavy-duty modular system which was already provided. Since no federal roads or highways could be used due to the total combined weight of 750 tons and the overall height of 7 meters, the transport wound its way through country roads along the Danube. The first section was covered during the night as a long time slot enabling the convoy to pass a railroad crossing was only available at that time. It was necessary to cut all the overhead lines. The next section of transport was carried out during the day. Already on the first day, one of the most difficult sections, a driving uphill approximately 5.5 kilometers long, should be covered. Very characteristic was the 1.5 kilometer section with a gradient of 8 to 9 percent. The transportation team of Adams therefore decided to integrate a self propelled heavy duty module with power pack into the 30 axle combination as a backup drive for the two 600 horsepower tractors to pull and to push. All of the next transport sections were covered during the day, in due time. The convoy reached the power station in Ersching near Ingolstadt within four days. Number 4. Bullet Tanks Bullet tanks are used to store liquefied petroleum gas. When LPG is stored under a moderate amount of pressure in gas tubes, cylinders, reservoirs and wider LPG storage vessels, it remains as either a gas, vapor or a liquid. Since gaseous LPG has a volume 270 times that of liquid LPG, it is nearly always shipped in its liquid form. Cars, rail, tanker trucks, intermodal containers, cylinder trucks, pipelines and municipal gas reticulation facilities are all options for transporting LPG propane. The majority of LPG consumers get their LPG from swap cylinders or tanker deliveries into a huge in-ground tank. When it comes to barbecue gas bottles, most people carry their depleted petrol bottles to a store to be refilled or swapped out. Number 3. Mamoe Terrific Trailer Power Assist The Mamoe Trailer Power Assist TPA, is a new ingenious engineered heavy transport solution designed to improve transport efficiency and significantly lower the carbon footprint of major projects around the world. TPA is a power trailer system designed to improve transport efficiency and significantly lower the carbon footprint of long-haul heavy transport projects. An alternative to SPMTs and conventional prime movers, it consists of six axle lines, the middle four of which are driven by a 1,000 horsepower hydraulic power pack unit. This system delivers twice the pulling force of a conventional prime mover and offers significant improvements to the safety and efficiency of projects. Number 2. Big Merino Australian The Big Merino is a massive four-story high, 17-meter long concrete merino sheep in the small town of Goulburn in New South Wales. The massive structure has been a tourist attraction in the town since 1985, but was relegated to a backwater when the Hume Highway bypass diverted the main road away from its prominent location in 1992. Two New Holland LM435A telehandlers belonging to Deval's Earth Moving were used along with a mini excavator to demolish the souvenir shop and lower structure. Rex J. Andrews transporters and mechanical engineers of Penrith in New South Wales planned and carried out the move with help from Dutalis Architects of Goldburn. The four concrete casings around the sheep's steel legs were removed so that they could be cut, allowing the steel frame structure to be jacked by allowing a 370-ton gross transporter trailer and tractor unit to be reversed under it. The legs were then welded to the trailer's bed to prevent slippage, and off it went on the 800-odd metre trip to its new location at a mobile station near the main highway. Number 1. Mamoe Coke Drums the lift and transport of coke drums in an 11,000 km move is one of the most recent extraordinary and impressive transportation processes of all time. At the start of the project, the drums were moved 7,330 miles from Spain to the port of Los Angeles, USA. Each coke drum weighed 250 tons each and measured 30 meters long and 8.5 meters wide. 
After arriving in Los Angeles, the drums were transported to the Redondo King Harbor Marina by barge, two at a time. On arrival at King Harbor, the drums were loaded onto 12 axle lines of Shul SPMT before being transported to Hernando Street on the West Pacific Coast Highway near the El Segundo Refinery. The experts in engineering, heavy lifting and transport successfully carried out all heavy lifts required to replace the two previous coke drums with two new coke drums, which measure 35 meters in length and weigh approximately 400 tons. The old coke drums were transported on 28 axle lines of SPMT. In the planning phase, various concepts were tested to ensure effective and timely implementation within the very limited space available on site and within the tight schedule of the entire shutdown. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed these fascinating insights, do well to like the video and subscribe with your notification bells turned on to be alerted as our new videos are up. You could also use the comments section to tell us what videos you'd like to see next. Until next time,